It is not enough to be able to read at grade level. It is not enough to be able to write simple sentences. You have to be able to express complex ideas in a meaningful way and utilizing strategies like the dictato or in reading utilizing strategies like show and tell processes helps you do that. Right, and so an example in that um, of the show and tell plus processes, we use a lot of sentence stems. So I think blank because blank. And we did that to be able to set them up for success with the mm -hmm. language, but also to be able to support them in critically thinking, not just telling me I think that they're sad, why are they sad? So yeah. we already Where's built in evidence? that, right? Like, I think I'm sad because blank. And they understand how language influences meaning, or they understand yes. how language impacts what they're doing. So I think that yeah. um, that is a really added benefit in uh, using those metalinguistic uh, tools in, mm -hmm. in our teaching. So we started out today with reading a book called Renee Has Two Last Names. And as we read that book, we really did the read a little, chat a little structure so that students had an opportunity to process content throughout. After we did the read a little, chat a little, and we found out like the major events and the challenges that this character was encountering, uh, we moved over to more of a smaller group setting. So the Dictato is a wonderful uh, metalinguistic tool to use to help students kind of uh, see the patterns across language. The way the Dictato worked is um, you read through the Dictato once in its entirety so that the students can all hear it. Then you break it into chunks. Um, the teacher says one chunk. The students say the chunk out loud and then write it. I'll read a piece out loud. You're going to say it back to me and then you're going to write it down. Okay, now I have specifically designed this writing based on what you as a third grade student in this classroom need. So I took your writing, I looked at your writing and I said, hmm, here are some skills these kiddos need to be better writers. And I designed this reading to help us do that. All right, so I'm gonna read the whole chunk first. Don't start writing yet, just listen, okay? Being called a name that is not your own is frustrating. Today, my teacher called me Cammie, but my name is really Camilla. My shoulders slumped. I don't like the name Cammie. All right, so I'm gonna say the first piece. You're gonna say it back to me, and then you're gonna write it down. Being called a name that is not your own. Okay, say it back to me. Being called a name that is not your own. Okay, this is the first part of the first sentence. I'll keep saying it while you write. Being called a name, go ahead and start writing, sweetie. Being called a name that is not your own. Being called a name that is not your own. Once all of the chunks have been read and the students have written the entire passage, then students are given pens. And um, as a teacher, I go through each sentence, I write it on the board. And then once the students have corrected mistakes, we do a think aloud. Now before I talk about this sentence, I want you to look at just this sentence, period at the end, and I want you to fix any mistakes that you made. I want you to notice two things, boys and girls. The first thing up here is I started with the word being. When we're in the third grade, we often start with words like I or words like the, okay? So we often start use like articles or we use pronouns to start our sentences. You can also start a sentence with a verb, a word like being, okay? And when you do that, it usually makes your sentences a little bit longer. Does anyone notice how the first two sentences were really long? Okay? When you start with something other than I or the, your sentences are usually a little more complex. Okay, the second thing that I did is exactly what you did with Dr. Tebow earlier. I told you how someone is feeling. Being called a name that is not your own is, there's that, what kind of verb is that? What kind of verb, guys? A being verb. A being verb, good job. Is, and then what was the emotion? Frustrating. Frustrating. Frustrating, okay? So I told you how you feel. Anything that was written in red or another color were the specific learning targets that we wanted to work on. So, uh, you know, we did sentence starters in a different color to show them, okay, I changed, I used a different sentence starter, here's why I did that. So that kind of that metacognitive think aloud about this is what I did as a writer and this is why I did it. 
So things to think about when we're writing, we want to think about how we're starting our sentences and I challenge you in your own writing to challenge yourself and try starting with a when phrase or starting with a verb and kind of taking it from there and trying to kind of create more creative sentences. Also, as writers, we can tell how someone's feeling or if we really want to be creative, we can show how someone's feeling, okay? That's something that a writer can do to make their writing more interesting. And then we always wanna remember our capital letters, all right? Do you guys have any questions about our writing today? All metal language really is, is, uh, is having the ability to kind of use language uh, to help me better understand uh, what I'm reading or what I'm writing, uh, really using language intentionally. Uh, and the dictato really helps me do that. In terms of um, the meta language awareness or meta linguistic awareness, um, I think that that's good for all of our students to be able to talk about language, to be able to understand that language influences meaning. Um, I think that um, it's supportive for them to not see that uh, language in silos and just doing those verbs or just doing those nouns, but to be able to see how all of those impact what they're doing in their reading and their writing. It's about uh, creating critical thinkers. It's about mm -hmm. creating students who, who are looking at the parts and seeing how they create the whole. So if I'm looking at my verbs, I'm using those verbs always to critically mm -hmm. think, what is the author telling me right now? And as a writer, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm thinking about the words that I'm starting my sentences with. I'm thinking about the verbs that I'm using. Right. Um, and so that's what this really gets at. This gets at like creating critical thinkers, uh, creating students who, have the tools that they need to be successful when they're out of this classroom, when they're in science class, in any other class that they have.